How to Conquer Video Game Addiction Liberating Yourself from the Bondage of Video Game Addiction People love video games, and that's not always a foul thing. Whether played on a handheld device, a computer, or a TV, the games may provide hours of quiet fun. The games may boost PC skills and better eye-hand coordination. One field of study demonstrated that surgeons who play video games perpetrate fewer surgical mistakes than do their non-game playing counterparts. Video games are emotionally secure. When a person makes an error, no one else recognizes, contrary to the public abasement of, say, striking out in a real-world ball game. And as each mistake made in a video game helps the player determine the particular action required to advance the next time, the player acquires the satisfaction of steadily bettering and finally winning. Bad Downsides Video games bear some adult downsides. Besides being really expensive, a lot of popular games involve graphic sex and violence. Maybe most distressful, they may be exceedingly addictive. Any person may become addicted to video games, and people with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder appear to be at particular risk. A lot of them have pitiful social or athletic skills, and this doesn't matter in the domain of video games. Such games level the field for people with AD HD. And people annoyed by distractibility in real life are capable of acute focus, hyperfocus, while playing. The video game spell is frequently so deep that the only way to acquire the player's attention is to shake her or go in her face. Do you discover yourself supervising how much time someone in your life or you spends with his Game Boy? Do you perpetually recommend him to switch off the Xbox? Does the want to play video games dominate her or you life? Once the set has to be switched off, do you get angry? If so, the time has come to help this person or yourself. Defeat video gaming addictions. Letting go of the virtual menace. Admit you have an issue as cliche or cheap as it might sound, the opening move to recovery is to admit to yourself and other people that you have a problem. Face the problem. There are any measure of reasons why somebody will deny that he or she has an addiction problem. Some causes have to do with embarrassment or concealment owed to true or perceived results, like getting penalized at home or suspended from school. A few individuals are humiliated that they have an issue that they feel that they can't control. They might feel bad about the things that they've done while focusing on the addiction. There's likewise a lot of stigma affiliated with addiction. Being labeled an addict might have any number of social and psychological results for the addict, including lowering one's self-respect, limiting one's societal, for example, being cut off from friends and loved ones, educational, i.e., being kicked out of school, or even occupational opportunities, e.g., not being employed at a local business. A lot of times, individuals don't wish to admit that they've an addiction as it will mean being forced to abandon something that they value or something they require to get by. But there are true repercussions if you don't admit to having an issue. You may be subject to more examination by loved ones, friends, or individuals in the community that might result in societal consequences. Likewise, many individuals believe they have their addiction under control, but in most cases addictions gain command of you. And occasionally an acquaintance, family member, or teammate is the one who encounters the signs of trouble first. How to address the situation? The thing you need to do is be relentless and be prepared with many particular examples. They won't prefer to hear it, so don't provide them the choice. Fill your gasoline tank, get them in your auto for a road trip, and begin talking once you're far enough away from the house that they won't just hop out at a stoplight and walk off. Don't drive up to your destination till you're through with the conversation. If you aren't a respected voice of reason to this individual already, it may help to get together with a friend who they see in this light. All the same, about the road trip thought, it works for me as I'm a person that doesn't let emotion get to me, but if you recognize you can't control your emotions and or tears well enough to drive safely while having this conversation, don't attempt it. Consider something else. Perhaps begin talking at the destination. Early in the discussion, bring up the information that they've changed since they began the addiction, greater than the addiction has impacted their behavior and brain, 
greater than as it's impacted their brain, how may they expect to realize the differences? To recall what they were like before. To recall how they used to make do and be happy without the addiction. Reason with them. Tell them specifically how they are different. Provide examples of situations you've witnessed when they acted in a manner that just wasn't them, or note, repeatedly, that they're not as keen, wide-eyed, or amusing as they used to be. Whatever the case might be. Most especially, remember to state, you were a better individual before. You'll have to recite and reword a lot, many times, in several ways, plenty, over and over and over again, and you'll have to answer the same questions more than once, and the conversation will get around in circles, but don't crumble. When you're correct, you're correct, and you have the truth on your side. If it turns into an argument, you win. At the very least, your friend won't take addictions so lightly any longer. Likewise, balance the toughness and assertion with real, truthful, listening. You may hear things you didn't anticipate, a few may be the most truthful things you've ever heard, but others may be obvious efforts to change the subject. Connect everything back to your original point, and don't roam too far from the subject till a resolution is accomplished. Distinguish the triggers. Triggers are mental and physical prompts that cause you to wish to indulge in your addiction, namely play games. Effort and work out what sort of things makes you wish to play video games. Perhaps it's a particular site that you go to online that begins your video gaming frenzy. Perhaps it's being around particular people that make you crave a game or two. Do your best to work out what sort of triggers make you wish to play games. What trips the cravings? Affiliations between peculiar feelings, individuals, places, and events get intertwined with the addict's behavior. When addicts find their way to recovery, the old affiliations between the addiction and the old feeling, individuals, places, and events endure, often sparking off cravings to use. When these prompts trigger using memories and possibly euphoric recall, unless you take action to forestall cravings and possible relapse, you remain highly vulnerable to dropping off your recovery. These prompts are ever-present, but relapse can be avoided. It's crucial to avoid the external triggers that are your most serious and that are inside your power to prevent. A lot of these would be the obvious ones like hanging out with old gaming friends or going to game stores. Triggers that cannot be headed off may be neutralized. To be ready and able to neutralize triggers that come up, you must be able to anticipate and distinguish them, then have a plan of action on how you'll deal with them without using. Below are regions that serve as triggers that may gear up cravings to return to the addiction. Utilize this to help distinguish your probable risks. Individuals. Who are the individuals you use to play video with? Arrive at a list. Make a list of others that may serve as a trigger for relapse. It may be extended loved ones, mate, girlfriend, your youngsters, boss, colleagues, neighbors and any others. Spots. Where did you use to start getting the video game urge? What are the places that may trigger cravings or euphoric recall? Make a list of the spots that may remind you of gaming slash using or serve as trigger. Illustrations may include bars, school, work, particular streets, particular parts of town, particular rooms. Events. What sorts of events did you habitually participate in while gaming? What are a few of the routine events that you may participate in now that may trigger cravings? Make a list of conceivable trigger-provoking events. Illustrations may include going to the game section of a store, becoming bored, going gambling, attending gaming conventions, and others. Festivities. What are a few of the celebrations or particular events that you may participate in that may serve as a trigger for relapse? Make a list. Illustrations may include birthdays, vacation, holidays, with or without extended family members, additional stressful events or activities. Discover other stressful events or activities that may serve as a trigger. Illustrations may include such matters as deaths of family members, divorce, separation, money problems, getting paid, getting a raise, unemployment, retiring, home alone, vacation, going by an ATM machine, home alone, etc. Relationship events. What sorts of relationship events were affiliated with your gaming use? 
Distinguish relationship events that may serve as a trigger. Illustrations may include meeting new individuals, going out on a date, hanging out with friends, after arguing, before sex, after sex, family visits, separation, divorce, etc. Time. When did you commonly use? Identify particular hours, week, month or year that might serve as a trigger for relapse. Illustrations may be Monday, Monday night football, Sunday, gearing up to go back to work, anniversary date or month of wounding events, after work, before work, attempting to get to sleep, rousing in the night, and any other times that are important. Making a design. Looking backward over your list above, distinguish actions that you are able to take to reduce the menace to your recovery. Which events may you avoid? Which events or spots may you escape from if you feel vulnerable? How may you empower yourself to break away? Rehearse being assertive with leaving a hazardous situation. Utilize cognitive therapy to dispute unrealistic thinking that may keep you from going away when you have to. Make a plan on how you may get away. Illustration, drive yourself, walk out, phone a cab, have a call list and have somebody come get you. What may you do to alter how you think or feel when you discover yourself in an unavoidable position that's triggering a want to use? Utilize thought-stopping strategies to manage cravings when they happen. Use the telephone. Call someone. Call your counselor. Engage somebody who's supportive of your recovery in a conversation. Prompt yourself that cravings are temporary and that they'll disappear if you don't use. Recall that cravings are a regular part of recovery and that they don't doom you to failure. Remind yourself that you've the option whether you act on your cravings. Consider a craving as a competition between you and your disease. Who will succeed? If you or somebody you love is in early recovery or attempting to establish abstinence, arm yourself with all the training that you have to achieve it. Make a plan. Design out your recovery. Stopping video games cold turkey may seem like the best way to break your addiction, but most individuals fail attempting to quit completely. Your best plan would be to step-by-step wean yourself away from video games. Make yourself a termination date of when you wish to be completely free from video games. Then, produce steps to that ending date, with many goals that you wish to accomplish. For instance, rather than playing for 20 hours a week, attempt cutting it down to 18 hours a week, and so forth. Don't get disheartened if you don't accomplish your goals. Remember, Roma wasn't built in a day and your dependency won't go away overnight. One day at a time. What treatment should be if you choose to go with addiction counseling? Handling symptoms. Addiction counselors ought to first address and point out the symptoms and outcomes of the addiction with the patient. For instance, point out physical things that have deteriorated in the patient since his addiction started. Point out weight loss, carpal tunnel, or any other physical feature you see altered. Also discuss how the addictions have resulted in altering the patient's life, like losing friends, losing a job, getting financially unstable, or getting in hassles with the law. These subjects should be discussed with the patient till the patient recognizes they understand that they were a direct cause of overusing the addiction. Admission. You should recognize urges to use and discuss what causes these urges, like stress, personal crises at home, or low self-respect. The counselor ought to recognize the causes of these urges, discuss how the addictions don't help solve the issue at hand, and then promote and motivate the patient to accomplish abstinence and to discover new ways to solve the trouble at hand. Abstention. As a recovery plan, the addict ought to be monitored for usage. The addict ought to be reinforced and encouraged when doing well, and a counselor ought to discuss why an addict did use if this does happen. The addict and the counselor ought to discuss and together discover fresh ways for the patient to solve life's problems and to make him happy, like meditating, exercising, authorship of song lyrics, volunteering, or joining a support group. The end goal is to have addicts become operational, responsible, and productive. Living Recovery For patients whose addiction resulted in substantial damages to their personal lives, a goal is likewise set to recover from these impairments and possibly make amends. To start, counseling sessions ought to be held between the addict and her friends or loved ones whose relationships were tarnished or altered due to the addiction. Some treatment options. 
Video game addiction treatment centers are cropping up in nations like China, Republic of Korea, the Netherlands and the US in an effort to supply help for video game addiction. Detox for Video Game Addiction is planned to help video game addicts discover how to effectively eliminate their compulsive, habit-forming behaviors much like those addicted to gambling and or alcohol abuse. Video game addiction books supply helpful advice to video game addicts on how to circumvent computer and video game addiction, as well as crucial data for parents struggling with their children's addiction to video games. Info in these books on video game addiction likewise discuss the increasing number of vehement video games and the adverse effects these games might have on youngsters and teens that parents might or might not be aware of. New Developments Ironically situated less than 15 miles from Microsoft's Redmond Central Office, there is a treatment center set on a five-acre wooden retreat with a 3,500-square-foot craftsman house, red cedar tree houses, hen houses, and goat pens. For a humongous cost for the 45-day stay, including application, screening and treatment fees, net and gaming addicts are severed from the web, cold turkey. The facility states inpatient treatment for net and gaming addiction includes working with a therapist, a recreation coach, yoga and workout instructors, nature hikes, house chores, career development and additional activities in an effort to reprogram patients and free them of their addiction to the internet or gaming. Even though net addiction or video game addiction isn't yet included in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders DSM, doesn't make these dependencies less serious and genuine, particularly in the lives and families impacted by the disorder. Regrettably, this addiction isn't recognized as a discriminate disorder by the American Psychiatric Association, and treatment isn't covered by insurance. But there are a lot of treatment centers for the addiction in Republic of China, Republic of Korea and Taiwan where the addiction is taken very earnestly, and a lot of psychiatric experts state it's clear that the addiction is true and harmful. The treatment center is run by psychotherapists who believe the net addiction and gaming are no less addictive than other apparently harmless activities, like gambling. However, therapists have seen patients who are compulsive net and gaming addicts to the point where they stop eating and sleeping the right way risk losing their occupations, marriages and relationships are wasted, plus assorted potentially grave health problems, including death. The adverse effects of net addiction or video game addiction can't be ignored anymore, if you or your youngsters are showing symptoms of addiction, act today. Treatment for video game addiction is like to detox for other addictions, with one crucial difference. Computers have gotten to be a crucial part of daily life, as well as many occupations, so compulsive gamers can't just look the other way when they see a personal computer. It's like a food dependency you have to determine how to live with food. As video game addicts can't avoid computers, they have to determine how to utilize them responsibly. That implies no gaming. As for limiting game time to an hour a day that's compared to an alcoholic stating he's only going to drink beer. The hardest part of treating video game addicts is that it's a little bit harder to show someone they're in trouble. Nobody's ever been set in jail for being under the influence of a game. The key is to demonstrate to gamers they're powerless over their addiction, and then instruct them on real-life exhilaration as opposed to game excitement. In conclusion, what ought to be a fun diversion may become an all-consuming addiction if left ungoverned. Make certain you set limits on your children's video game utilization. Do not think of it as denying your youngsters something. Instead, think of it as training healthy habits. While video game addiction doesn't appear in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition, DSM-4, unreasonable and unhealthy video game habits are something that's received increased attention in the past several years. It's difficult to deny that a few individuals, whether they're youngsters, teens, or grown-ups, play video games far too much and that it may negatively impact their functioning and success outside from the glare of the monitor. Naturally, not everybody becomes addicted to video games. Net games are enjoyed by millions of individuals around the world as a way to unwind, interact with acquaintances, and for simple entertainment uses. All the same, it's becoming clear that there are those who lose control of their gaming habits. For these people, video games, especially net multiplayer games, take center stage in their lives. Work performance might suffer due to lengthy late-night gaming sessions. School grades might drop as a result of giving more attention to video games than studying. 
relationships might deteriorate as one partner feels neglected and more insignificant than his or her partner's latest game obsession. The more time an individual spends playing video games, the less time there is for the important individuals in his or her life. Face-to-face -face human contact is more and more sacrificed in favor of the game. As a consequence, the individual might experience social isolation, lost friendships, and loneliness. Hopefully this book has given you tools to deal with this particular addiction. between the addict and her friends or loved ones whose relationships were tarnished or altered due to the addiction. Some treatment options. Video game addiction treatment centers are cropping up in nations like China, Republic of Korea, the Netherlands and the US in an effort to supply help for video game addiction. Detox for video game addiction is planned to help video game addicts discover how to effectively eliminate their compulsive habit-forming behaviors much like those addicted to gambling and or alcohol abuse. Video game addiction books supply helpful advice to video game addicts on how to circumvent computer and video game addiction, as well as crucial data for parents struggling with their children's addiction to video games. Info in these books on video game addiction likewise discuss the increasing number of vehement video games and the adverse effects these games might have on youngsters and teens that parents might or might not be aware of. New developments. Ironically situated less than 15 miles from Microsoft's Redmond Central Office, there is a treatment center set on a five-acre wooden retreat with a 3,500-square-foot craftsman house, red cedar tree houses, hen houses, and goat pens. For a humongous cost for the 45-day stay, including application, screening and treatment fees, net and gaming addicts are severed from the web, cold turkey. The facility states inpatient treatment for net and gaming addiction includes working with a therapist, a recreation coach, yoga and workout instructors, nature hikes, house chores, career development and additional activities in an effort to reprogram patients and free them of their addiction to the internet or gaming. Even though net addiction or video game addiction isn't yet included in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders DSM, doesn't make these dependencies less serious and genuine, particularly in the lives and families impacted by the disorder. Regrettably, this addiction isn't recognized as a discriminate disorder by the American Psychiatric Association, and treatment isn't covered by insurance. But there are a lot of treatment centers for the addiction in Republic of China, Republic of Korea and Taiwan where the addiction is taken very earnestly, and a lot of psychiatric experts state it's clear that the addiction is true and harmful. The treatment center is run by psychotherapists who believe the net addiction and gaming are no less addictive than other apparently harmless activities, like gambling. However, therapists have seen patients who are compulsive net and gaming addicts to the point where they stop eating and sleeping the right way risk losing their occupations, marriages and relationships are wasted, plus assorted potentially grave health problems, including death. The adverse effects of net addiction or video game addiction can't be ignored anymore, if you or your youngsters are showing symptoms of addiction, act today. Treatment for video game addiction is like to detox for other addictions, with one crucial difference. Computers have gotten to be a crucial part of daily life, as well as many occupations, so compulsive gamers can't just look the other way when they see a personal computer. It's like a food dependency you have to determine how to live with food. As video game addicts can't avoid computers, they have to determine how to utilize them responsibly. That implies no gaming. As for limiting game time to an hour a day that's compared to an alcoholic stating he's only going to drink beer. The hardest part of treating video game addicts is that it's a little bit harder to show someone they're in trouble. Nobody's ever been set in jail for being under the influence of a game. The key is to demonstrate to gamers they're powerless over their addiction, and then instruct them on real-life exhilaration as opposed to game excitement. In conclusion, what ought to be a fun diversion may become an all-consuming addiction if left ungoverned. 
Make certain you set limits on your children's video game utilization. Do not think of it as denying your youngsters something. Instead, think of it as training healthy habits. While video game addiction doesn't appear in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition, DSM-4, unreasonable and unhealthy video game habits are something that's received increased attention in the past several years. It's difficult to deny that a few individuals, whether they're youngsters, teens, or grown-ups, play video games far too much and that it may negatively impact their functioning and success outside from the glare of the monitor. Naturally, not everybody becomes addicted to video games. Net games are enjoyed by millions of individuals around the world as a way to unwind, interact with acquaintances, and for simple entertainment uses. All the same, it's becoming clear that there are those who lose control of their gaming habits. For these people, video games, especially net multiplayer games, take center stage in their lives. Work performance might suffer due to lengthy late-night gaming sessions. School grades might drop as a result of giving more attention to video games than studying. Relationships might deteriorate as one partner feels neglected and more insignificant than his or her partner's latest game obsession. The more time an individual spends playing video games, the less time there is for the important individuals in his or her life. Face-to-face -face human contact is more and more sacrificed in favor of the game. As a consequence, the individual might experience social isolation, lost friendships, and loneliness. Hopefully this book has given you tools to deal with this particular addiction. DSM doesn't make these dependencies less serious and genuine, particularly in the lives and families impacted by the disorder. Regrettably, this addiction isn't recognized as a discriminate disorder by the American Psychiatric Association, and treatment isn't covered by insurance. But there are a lot of treatment centers for the addiction in Republic of China, Republic of Korea and Taiwan where the addiction is taken very earnestly, and a lot of psychiatric experts state it's clear that the addiction is true and harmful. The treatment center is run by psychotherapists who believe the net addiction and gaming are no less addictive than other apparently harmless activities, like gambling. However, therapists have seen patients who are compulsive net and gaming addicts to the point where they stop eating and sleeping the right way, risk losing their occupations, marriages and relationships are wasted, plus assorted potentially grave health problems, including death. The adverse effects of net addiction or video game addiction can't be ignored anymore, if you or your youngsters are showing symptoms of addiction, act today. Treatment for video game addiction is like to detox for other addictions, with one crucial difference. Computers have gotten to be a crucial part of daily life, as well as many occupations, so compulsive gamers can't just look the other way when they see a personal computer. It's like a food dependency you have to determine how to live with food. As video game addicts can't avoid computers, they have to determine how to utilize them responsibly. That implies no gaming. As for limiting game time to an hour a day that's compared to an alcoholic stating he's only going to drink beer. The hardest part of treating video game addicts is that it's a little bit harder to show someone they're in trouble. Nobody's ever been set in jail for being under the influence of a game. The key is to demonstrate to gamers they're powerless over their addiction and then instruct them on real-life exhilaration as opposed to game excitement. In conclusion, what ought to be a fun diversion may become an all-consuming addiction if left ungoverned. Make certain you set limits on your children's video game utilization. Do not think of it as denying your youngsters something. Instead, think of it as training healthy habits. While video game addiction doesn't appear in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition, DSM-4, unreasonable and unhealthy video game habits are something that's received increased attention in the past several years. It's difficult to deny that a few individuals, whether they're youngsters, teens, or grown-ups, play video games far too much and that it may negatively impact their functioning and success outside from the glare of the monitor. Naturally, not everybody becomes addicted to video games. Net games are enjoyed by millions of individuals around the world as a way to unwind, interact with acquaintances, and for simple entertainment uses. 
All the same, it's becoming clear that there are those who lose control of their gaming habits. For these people, video games, especially net multiplayer games, take center stage in their lives. Work performance might suffer due to lengthy late night gaming sessions. School grades might drop as a result of giving more attention to video games than studying. Relationships might deteriorate as one partner feels neglected and more insignificant than his or her partner's latest game obsession. The more time an individual spends playing video games, the less time there is for the important individuals in his or her life. Face-to-face -face human contact is more and more sacrificed in favor of the game. As a consequence, the individual might experience social isolation, lost friendships, and loneliness. Hopefully this book has given you tools to deal with this particular addiction. Gotten to be a crucial part of daily life, as well as many occupations, so compulsive gamers can't just look the other way when they see a personal computer. It's like a food dependency you have to determine how to live with food. As video game addicts can't avoid computers, they have to determine how to utilize them responsibly. That implies no gaming. As for limiting game time to an hour a day that's compared to an alcoholic stating he's only going to drink beer. The hardest part of treating video game addicts is that it's a little bit harder to show someone they're in trouble. Nobody's ever been set in jail for being under the influence of a game. The key is to demonstrate to gamers they're powerless over their addiction, and then instruct them on real-life exhilaration as opposed to game excitement. In conclusion, what ought to be a fun diversion may become an all-consuming addiction if left ungoverned. Make certain you set limits on your children's video game utilization. Do not think of it as denying your youngsters something. Instead, think of it as training healthy habits. While video game addiction doesn't appear in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition, DSM-4, unreasonable and unhealthy video game habits are something that's received increased attention in the past several years. It's difficult to deny that a few individuals, whether they're youngsters, teens, or grown-ups, play video games far too much and that it may negatively impact their functioning and success outside from the glare of the monitor. Naturally, not everybody becomes addicted to video games. Net games are enjoyed by millions of individuals around the world as a way to unwind, interact with acquaintances, and for simple entertainment uses. All the same, it's becoming clear that there are those who lose control of their gaming habits. For these people, video games, especially net multiplayer games, take center stage in their lives. Work performance might suffer due to lengthy late-night gaming sessions. School grades might drop as a result of giving more attention to video games than studying. Relationships might deteriorate as one partner feels neglected and more insignificant than his or her partner's latest game obsession. The more time an individual spends playing video games, the less time there is for the important individuals in his or her life. Face-to-face -face human contact is more and more sacrificed in favor of the game. As a consequence, the individual might experience social isolation, lost friendships, and loneliness. Hopefully this book has given you tools to deal with this particular addiction. Video Game Utilization do not think of it as denying your youngsters something. Instead, think of it as training healthy habits. While video game addiction doesn't appear in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition, DSM-4, unreasonable and unhealthy video game habits are something that's received increased attention in the past several years. It's difficult to deny that a few individuals, whether they're youngsters, teens, or grown-ups, play video games far too much and that it may negatively impact their functioning and success outside from the glare of the monitor. Naturally, not everybody becomes addicted to video games. Net games are enjoyed by millions of individuals around the world as a way to unwind, interact with acquaintances, and for simple entertainment uses. All the same, it's becoming clear that there are those who lose control of their gaming habits. For these people, video games, especially net multiplayer games, take center stage in their lives. Work performance might suffer due to lengthy late-night gaming sessions. School grades might drop as a result of giving more attention to video games than studying. 
relationships might deteriorate as one partner feels neglected and more insignificant than his or her partner's latest game obsession. The more time an individual spends playing video games, the less time there is for the important individuals in his or her life. Face-to-face -face human contact is more and more sacrificed in favor of the game. As a consequence, the individual might experience social isolation, lost friendships, and loneliness. Hopefully this book has given you tools to deal with this particular addiction.